copies of uh, responses to Kitty's questions were, were very helpful in terms of framing um, my thinking about this and hopefully we'll help well, with the process. Well, first, first of all, Bruce, welcome. Yes. Yeah, we thank, thank you <laughs> for coming here today. Thank uh, we thank you for your application and your interest in serving on the board. So. Um, what we'll do is, as uh, I outlined to you when I sent an email out, was that you know you'll have five to seven minutes to you know, or a little longer, it doesn't matter. Then we'll um, ask you some specific questions. Of course. Okay. I'll I'll begin by going over the material that uh, Kitty asked about because I think that that's a very good place to start. You and if email. anyone has a question, yeah. just butt in any time. What's that? That's fine. What's that? Um, first of all, thank you for letting me, and thank you for letting me get this far in the process. I really appreciate it. Uh, and to get right into Kitty's questions, you have my resume, so I won't go over that material again, uh, but you're free to ask me about it, of course. But Kitty's first question was, do you have any prior IDA experience? And the answer is no. And I'll get to it later what I think the pros and cons of that are. But moving on to your second question, where might my focus be as a member of the IDA? We know that unemployment is still grim in this county. It's terrible. We saw last week that we have the worst performance in the state for small counties in terms of job growth. We actually lost private sector jobs last month. So clearly, for everybody, job creation has to be number one at this point in time. There's can be no other consideration there. Uh, the second point, though, I think is we really also have to think about the quality of the jobs that we create. We need good jobs, jobs that pay a living wage. A job that doesn't pay a living wage is not necessarily a net benefit to the county. For example, if someone were to take a, come in from out of state to take a low paying job that had no health benefits, that didn't pay a living wage, and they had to rely on food banks and emergency rooms and so on to make ends meet, there's a social and economic cost to the taxpayers here that we have to take into consideration. We need good jobs, no question about that. We need jobs and we need good jobs. The IDA's stated mission is to prevent unemployment and economic deterioration. That's sort of a downbeat way of looking at it, but that's actually a very fair assessment of where we're at at this time. But it's also charged with promoting tourism and recreation. Uh, and I believe in the, the long run, jobs that keep Sullivan County an attractive place to visit and live will be as important as job creation itself. Mm -hmm. And I quote here uh, something that Alan wrote in the River Reporter, which I agree with wholeheartedly. He said, uh, his piece was called Tourism in the Age of Casinos, the Challenge of Retaining Local Charm and Scenic Natural Assets. And he wrote, with the prospect of at least one casino destination resort, it's not too soon to plan for the transition from desperation of economics, that is taking any job, uh, any economic development that comes away, to growth management. I agree with this, absolutely. Uh, if the economy approves, if we can get the jobs back, if some of these big projects like the casino and the health center come online, uh, then I think we can afford to be and should be more discriminating about picking and choosing to support jobs that will actually increase the, the comprehensive appeal of Sullivan County to outsiders and to keep residents and businesses here that we already have. Um, someday we could rewrite the uh, IDA statement, hopefully, so it talks about full employment and a thriving economy instead of unemployment and economic deterioration. Uh, one way to ensure the long-term health of our economy is to encourage construction and building retrofitting retrofitting that adheres to high standards in terms of energy conservation and utilization of renewable energy supplies. As you know, I'm a member of the SASD, and at a retreat we held last fall, I encouraged our organization to engage more closely with the IDA and help develop building standards that will achieve this goal. I believe you've already seen the work Stephen and Mike uh, uh, Carroll have done along these lines, and I hope you agree it's a worthwhile undertaking. I also think the IDA has a very important role to play in rebuilding our towns and villages. There are many, many of them are at risk because storefront after storefront is vacant. You go down Bro Main Street and Broadway here, it's horrifying. Same thing in Jeffersonville, same thing in Burleyville, Liberty. 
So w one of the ways we can address that is by working with the partnership to make a concerted effort to bring businesses to the county that promise to locate on Main Street. If businesses locate elsewhere and take more commercial business away from our small business owners on Main Streets, our towns are hollowed out and we lose what's so central to our way of life, a small town life. We've got to keep Main Street, get Main Street open again for business and we've got to support businesses that will promise to locate on Main Street in whatever town it is here. Uh, I also believe very strongly that locally owned and operated businesses are the best bet for Sullivan County because people who live here and are committed here will make business decisions that consider more than just the bottom line and we need that. Sometimes you've got to hang in there when things aren't good. We don't want people to come in and cut and run simply because this year or that year is not good. We need commitment and that comes from people who live here and have and uh, own the businesses. Uh, another question that Kitty asked, which is uh, again a very important one, is how do you plan to support businesses in the outside communities? And uh, Howard sent an email and we clarified, I think, that we're talking about the rural areas, the le less uh, areas that are less served by uh, perhaps the idea of the smaller towns. Uh, we agree that, everyone agrees, Bethel Wood, Center for Discovery, we need these things that are anchors for our economy here. We can't do without them. But we have to also find a way to support small businesses. We have to focus on small and businesses in the small towns if we're going to get anywhere. Uh, the county as a whole can't succeed if there are pockets of, of, of uh, empty towns. Um, I note that the IDA staff has been making presentations at town meetings and to make sure that the people fully understand what the IDA has to offer. And I think that's an excellent initiative that should be continued. I think we have to make sure that business owners are made aware of resources such as the IDA administered Rural Micro Entrepreneur Assistance Program, RMAC, which can help people <coughs> who might not otherwise qualify for support from the IDA. Uh, as you can see, I think small is beautiful in many ways. Um, and, and then the Kitty asked, are you aware that the IDA is subject to the Sullivan County's ethics law? I am. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a real concern with me. I'm retired. I don't have business interests in the county. I don't have official or business relations with any town or the county. So I can't imagine that I would be conflicted on a project or have to recuse myself from voting. And then, uh, last question that Kitty asked was, if you were a member of the IDA, how would you help support the business community in small rural areas? Uh, and as I noted earlier, outreach to small businesses is crucial, and I think we also have to look at the agricultural sector. Our farms not only comprise an important part of our economy, they also contribute immeasurably to making Sullivan County a great place to visit and live. Where would tourism be if we lost all our farms? I mean, that's a question we have to ask ourselves. Uh, so I believe retaining and expanding the agricultural base is every bit as important as job creation. Many farmers we know have been struggling. We've lost lots of dairy farms in recent years, and the surviving ones are struggling because they're victims of an unfair pricing system that sometimes pays them below the cost of production. But there's ways around this, and we know what they are. Even if we can't change national farm policy and, and price supports for milk, the Tonjes family has shown us that we can make value-added products like yogurt and uh, cheese. We can make a go of it as a dairy farmer. We stop selling milk by the hundred weight. We know that. Uh, the red meat plant is going to put unutilized pasture land into business instead of land going fallow and again becoming a blight on the, on the landscape. We'll live landscape with sheep and goats and cows on it. It'll be beautiful. It will make money for people who are, have hard pressed paying their taxes. Uh, and the third thing, there's a huge unmet need for high-end organic produce that Sullivan County can provide to the urban uh, market. I've heard it estimated as high as three or four billion dollars a year. We can have a role in this. Mark Dunow, who is a farm of, I believe, three or four acres in Delaware County, sent his kids to college on a farm that size. You don't have to have hundreds of acres to make a go as a farmer. Uh, and our landscape doesn't permit that. I mean, we have very fractured geology here. We have hills, we have swamps, we have woods, we have open land. We basically have 
access to small fields. If not, you can't go out. There's very few places and go out and plow uh, the, or reap uh, on a hundred acres flat land that doesn't exist here. But these small micro farms that produce high-end produce can thrive and they can bring back agriculture in an important way. And we also know, incidentally, there are lots of young people who are desperate to get into farming here. Uh, I remember when uh, we had a presentation at the uh, visitors, um, CVI building a couple of years ago. Uh, the guy from Polyface Farm came up and talked, and there were dozens and dozens and dozens of people in their teens and, and 20s who were dying to break into farming. They need access to the cap capital to get started in farming, and this can be done with sharing with older farmers. There's, uh, there's many ways that can be done that, that uh, don't involve direct subsidies, but we have to let young people break into farming. They're desperate to do it, they're here, and they can turn an important sector of the economy around, because farmers are aging. Uh, the average age of farmer in the United States is in the 50s. That's a dying industry. You've got to bring young people in, and there's, again, microloans and so on, sharing with uh, existing farmers who will make a turnover like Dick Risen did with turned over some of his land to young people, let them farm it. These are all ways to go forward. There's a final question that Kitty didn't ask, but I think I in particular need to ask him. Why do you want someone on the IDA who's not an integral part of the business community, who doesn't have IDA experience? And that's the question you're really going to have to decide when you consider my candidacy. Uh, is the fact that I'll come at this with fresh eyes and a, and a, a new approach, perhaps? Is that a benefit, or is, are we going to see this lack of experience? That's for you guys to decide. Um, it's all I can say that I understand that to contribute, I'll have to master a lot of material, and I can tell you I'm good at that. I spent my entire life, um, decades anyway, working in the news industry where suddenly you're on a story and you're buried in lots of data and information, and you've got to get a grip on it and make sense out of it. That's what I'm trained to do. I can do it, and I would do it here. I can promise you I would work to master what needs to be mastered and to participate in the board. The only other thing I'd like to add is that I am, again, in my professional career and because my work as a volunteer community, unpaid volunteer for the last six or seven years, I am a team player. I believe in collaboration. I enjoy collaboration. In the news business, you don't put a story together without lots of people getting together and everyone putting in the two cents. At the end of the day, you've got to come out with a product, and you want everyone to be reasonably happy with it. Uh, I find the same thing on the boards I've served on. I've served on several of them, as you know. And uh, my preferred way of working with people is collaboration and consensus. I don't like decisions that are narrowly decided by a vote. As this vote might maybe. I don't think it serves America well. I mean, you look what's happened to our Congress where you have, you have a narrow vote, you have lots of losers. 49% of the population can be a loser, and you got 51% of winner. Well, nobody really wins that way. I think the Native Americans had it right. They used to, in the Northeast here, the Five Nations would go into conferences that brought all the tribes together, and they would sit until they reached a unanimous decision on things. Now, we can't do that in 2014, I know that. but. I think it's always good to strive for consensus. It's always good to, 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 because then you have to at least hear what the other person's saying. A narrowly decided vote where we go in with a preconception doesn't serve anybody. And I can promise you that if I were on the board, I would keep an open mind until all opinions have been put out there and reserve facts until we know where we're going. A reserve judgment until we know all, all the facts. Anyway, that's it. And any questions you have? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. That was certainly comprehensive. We have no questions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. Um, actually, we do have a couple of questions that I probably will skip over for you because I think you answered them in the, uh, I will tell you what the question is, but I think you probably answered it. Uh, but the first question that we have uh, today is, um, there are certainly many misconceptions regarding the purpose of an IDA and what their role is in economic development. So what is your understanding of the purpose of an IDA and specifically what their role in economic development in Sullivan County is? Well, you know, th its mission statement, which I read part of here, makes it very clear the mission is to improve the economy, create jobs, and it's also 
it says create uh, enhanced tourism and recreation. So it's really a, a broad based mandate. I, I know the focus is generally has been, I think, in, at least in public perception, on the fact that the idea is supposed to create big projects and bring lots of jobs in. Well, that's a part of it, and it's an important part of it, but I think it also goes beyond that. I think we want to look comprehensively at, 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 at the impact of projects, large and small, on the county as a whole, because we're really building a, uh, a mosaic here. You can't have just big projects. You can't have just small projects. We need the right mix, and we need the right things that are going to endure over time. And uh, so I think we really have to look at agriculture, small business, big business, and general livability and attractiveness for the community. I think it has a broad mandate, and we should exercise the full mandate. Thank you. <clears throat> this is not a trick question. Do you feel it is appropriate to promote your own business property to an IDA applicant when the applicant is aware of your IDA board membership? You're talking about as a, an outsider coming to the board and saying, hey, you, are you talking about a member or a, a member? member. Public? If somebody comes to you, if an applicant has come to you and they've asked for benefits. Say, Gee, I'm, on, I'm your colleague on the board, but I really have this thing, the idea could help the county, help me, and blah, blah, blah. No, it's about you promoting your own business to an applicant. An applicant comes in, as they a have member a, of the board, though. As a member of the board, correct. As a member of the board. Promoting your own business to another board member. Let me do it again. There's an oh, I see. Someone comes to the board. An applicant comes for, comes in and, and asks say, for benefits. I can help you out with my business, for instance. Is that, am I getting it right? You're going to, oh, oh well, you want a gravel pit and I sell, guess what, I sell dump trucks. Let's talk. Is that, is this what we're talking about? No, I Please. don't. I don't, I think that that's a case where that perhaps you say to that person, look, I sell dump trucks. I don't really think you should talk to me. I think you should go talk to Ed or, or another member of the board who's not in the dump truck business. I, I should say this one out. No, I don't think that's appropriate. With the possibility of gaming developers coming to Sullivan County and seeking IDA benefits, do you believe financial ability to pay the, actually pay the full taxes should be a reason to deny applicants? I'm going to do that again. With the possibility of gaming developers coming to Sullivan County and seeking IDA benefits, do you believe financial ability of the applicant to actually pay full taxes should be a reason to deny the applicant benefits? No, because I think that misses the whole point of the IDA. I and mean, the IDA is there to help a business venture that might need tax abatements or bonding. That's, that's the point of it. So to say that is to say we don't, shouldn't have an IDA. I don't agree with that. I do agree that with every project, including casinos, maybe particularly with casinos, we've got to look and offer what's needed to land the job and not give away things. It's a negotiation. We are representing the taxpayers, and if you give tax payments, someone's paying that money. It may not be the business, but someone's paying that money. It's the taxpayers here. Uh, bonding doesn't have the same immediate impact on, on Sullivan County taxpayers. But still, it's a negotiation. It's a business deal, and we should get the best deal for the taxpayers. We can't. We shouldn't give away benefits that we don't have to to keep a business. If a business is going to come here anyway, if a casino is dying to get in Sullivan County, that puts us in the catbird seat. We don't have to start throwing stuff at a business like that. If a business can choose to be in Ulster County or in Sullivan County or in Rockland County, well, that's a different deal. Then we may have to sweeten the pot. But it's a negotiation, and we should negotiate from the, we represent the taxpayers, and we negotiate the best deal for the taxpayers in every mm -hmm. instance. How do you feel a casino resort development will impact economic development in the business community countywide? That's a good question. And the, uh, Thank you. The devil's, are <laughs> <laughs> the devil's in the details, really. Um, what, what does the casino consist of? Uh, I would love to see a casino, and it looks like we're going to get one or two. I would love to see a casino that perhaps wasn't entirely hermetically sealed from the county, that 
was constructed in such a way that had some facilities and maybe offered some things, but not everything. So maybe they wanted to go out and go to, to a, a, a restaurant that's not within the casino or entertainment that's not within the casino. I'd love to see a casino that came to the county and said, look, we want a partner. We know that you've got X number of bed and breakfasts here. We, and we know you get these restaurants here and you know, you entertain them to get to here and there. Guess what, in the casino, we're going to have brochures, where to stay in Sullivan County, where to dine in Sullivan County. I mean, there's all sorts of incentives that a casino can take uh, shopping. Do you want just high-end stores in the casino? That, that So when you bust in or you drive in, you go to those stores and you don't spend a dime in town? Or do you want a casino that's going to say, hey, look, there's a great antique store in, you know, Liberty. Check it out. Uh, so I, I don't think we know until we see the full shape of what the casino is. And again, I think, I hope you guys as legislators, and I hope the IDA, to the extent it's involved, uh, make a good deal for the people of Sullivan County. It's, it's, not a, it's not necessarily one thing or another. It's really how the deals work out. <clears throat> this is a long question, but the first part of it is a, basically a scenario and then a question. The, um, periodically, the uniform tax abatement policy is reviewed with the taxing jurisdictions, and the pilot programs are changed, added, or eliminated. A developer, so, so the scenario is a developer comes into the IDA with an application for a specific pilot and meets all the criteria for the pilot, has satisfied the environmental review process, and has a favorable cost-benefit analysis. They also show the financial capability to build and maintain the project. <coughs> what is your opinion as to the rights of getting the pilot and sales and mortgage tax abatements? The right to getting it. Again, I'm, I guess I'm not. They've come in and they satisfied all of the requirements yeah. uh, according to the right. uniform tax yeah. abatement policy. So what is your opinion as to what they're right to the benefits are. Well, they're entitled to it, and, and again, I would say that if they're entitled to it, that's question number one. An equally important question is, do they have to get it? In other words, are they bound and determined to be here? Uh, or, or, or are they shopping around for a place to set up shop? If they're shopping around, we offer them inducements to bring them to the county. Um, I, I hate to even touch on this one issue, but um, uh, the Millennium Pipeline now got tax abatements in this county in 07, 08 when it did, uh, expanded its diameter. The, the pipeline was here already. They had a right-of-way for over 100 miles. Were they really going to go elsewhere if Sullivan County didn't give them tax abatements? I don't think so. Guess what? Tioga County didn't give them a penny in tax abatements, and the pipeline still goes through Tioga County. There's an instance where I don't think you necessarily have to give away the store, because we, we had them. We had them here. They didn't have a choice of where they're going to locate. So again, it's a negotiation. It, what, what are we getting in return for our dollars? Are we just giving dollars to people because they're here and they want dollars? OK, thank you. Um, again. Um, the questions that were here that I think you already um, asked, so I just want to make sure that everybody is aware that you know we're letting you know what it is. As a potential IDA member, have you, you or your family ever received IDA be benefits, and how was that? In, how has that influenced your desire to be on the board? I believe that you answered that in your opening. No. Yeah. Uh, and then, do you feel IDA should include equitable efforts in small business development as afforded to larger job creators? And again, I think that you addressed that in your opening question. Um, we do have five or six more minutes, so I will ask again um, if any, but any of anybody on the board has a specific question you would like to ask Bruce. No? Well, I'd like to, in the interest of uh, you know, the fact that the previous candidate spoke a few minutes about their life experience and their, what they see as having taken from that life experience as qualifications for this job in the interest of fairness, I'd like to see the same. So okay. basically, you know, what, I, I know your resume, but how do you apply the lessons learned or the morals or whatever qualities and skills you picked up 
in your life experience that you feel uh, are transferable still to this scenario? Well, I think, or I touched on a couple of them already. I think uh, my training and ability to master lots of information, uh, which you learn in the news business, because if you don't learn it, you don't survive. I mean, you, you may be given the story on something you know nothing about, it may be a very complicated story. You've got to get on top of all the facts and make sense of it. I think that's a skill that's directly applicable. I think also the collaborative nature of uh, kind of work I've done makes me a good candidate for the idea and other boards. And I have served on three non-paying jobs on three boards here in Sullivan County. And frankly, it's been the most rewarding thing I've done in my life. I love it. I love the work. I love, I love working with people. Uh, I think that's part of it. I am committed to Sullivan County. I took early retirement. And I was able to do it because I actually have a pretty good business head, even though I've not been a businessman. Uh, I managed my own finances, and that enabled me to retire at 57 and move here. And I, I did it because I wanted to be here. I couldn't wait to be able to move to my home in Sullivan County. Uh, this is, this, you're going to have to carry me out of here. I'm here uh, regardless of what happens. And I spend most of my waking days working on projects that others may not agree, but that I think benefit this community. I understand some of what I do to do is political, and others may not share my politics, but hey, we're all politicians here. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, is, is what I intend to do. I'm, I will do that whether I work at the IDA or elsewhere. I'm committed to doing it. OK. okay. Anybody else? Bruce, thank you very much. Thank you very we much. appreciate thank you coming you. in, and we appreciate you stepping up to uh, take one of our seats.